Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to continue where I left off. Um, I'm going to now complete model 4-2, which is just enhancing model 4-1. So in a previous video, we created this model 4-1, um, and we showed this model to um, the plant manager, and the plant manager noticed some discrepancies between our model and the real system. The first observation is that this is actually a two shift operation. And while on the first shift, there are two rework operators, on the second shift, there is only one. So we can come here to resource, and instead of this being a fixed capacity of two, we can call this based on a schedule. Um, and we have to give the schedule a name. So let's call this rework schedule. Um, and then we have the pick of the schedule rules. So we have three rules, wait, ignore, and preempt. Um, in the textbook, it is figure 4-6. Um, there's a very nice graphic that will explain these three rules, and you should probably know um, what they are so that you can make the correct determination. Um, and so we're going to actually use, in this case, the ignore rule. Um, because our schedule is for shifts, um, and if a person is finishing up work at the end of their shift, that doesn't mean that they're going to come in late for their next shift, or it shouldn't anyway. Um, so their shift, their off time, their eight hours off, is actually going to be shortened by those couple minutes that they were continuing to work after end of shift. So we're going to use the ignore rule, um, and then we can come to the schedule tab. And because we gave that schedule a name, now we have a schedule listed here. And this schedule is affecting the capacity of a resource. So this is a capacity schedule. And we can keep the time units in hours. Um, if you look in the book and on many resources online, um, schedules are defined via a picture graphic. There's like a little graph that you fill out. Um, but in the most recent version of ARENA, that is no longer available. So instead, we have to fill out a table and the table can be a little tricky. Um, so for example, let's say I work for two hours. I go on break for half an hour. And then I work for another five hours. Let me delete this row. This is how I would um, fill out my schedule. So. I am available, my resource, me, I'm available for two hours. Then for half an hour, I there are zero of me's available to work. And then for five hours, there is again one me to work. So we're going to do something similar. We have uh, two reworks um, operators for the first eight hours, and we only have one rework operator for the second um eight hours. And then after that, these will just um, repeat themselves. So if our simulation runs for longer than 16 hours, it'll just go back and um, cycle through the schedule repeatedly. So we have our schedule. The plant manager also tells us that the sealer machine is not 100% reliable. It has some periodic failures. So we want to define some failures here. If we go to this resource, the sealer machine, we can say that yes, it does experience some failures and the failure that it experiences, we'll just call it the sealer failure. And we'll use the wait rule. Now that we've defined um, that this resource has a failure associated to it, we can go to the advanced process panel um, and come down to the failure spreadsheet. And now this failure is here. So we're told that the mean uptime, so that's from the end of one failure to the onset of the second of another failure, the mean uptime is 120 minutes and it follows an exponential distribution. And then the mean time it takes to repair the machine, the mean downtime, is also exponentially distributed with a mean of four minutes. So what we want to do is we want to say that this is um, being recorded in terms of time. Um, sometimes um, we're given failure statistics 
as in this um, printer will fail after 10,000 copies are made. And so then that would be a count. Or we would be told that this printer will fail after three months are up. And so then that's by time. Um, so we're given our failure statistics in time. So we have our mean uptime is an exponential distribution with a mean of 120 minutes. And our mean downtime is exponential with a mean of four minutes. Um, and then additionally, the production manager is thinking about buying some racks for the rework area. So what we can do um, is we can define our own statistic. That's not something standard um, in most processes. So we can define our own statistic. We can call this um, number of racks needed. And this is a frequency statistic. And what we're looking at is we're going to be looking at the length of the queue at the rework station. So we're looking at the value of, and we can right click and go to build expression, the value of the current number in queue at the rework station. Okay, so we're just going to be looking at this value and we're going to categorize it into different uh, categories. We're going to say that when, um, when there are zero items in the rework queue, we're gonna call this um, no racks. No, we're going to call this zero racks because I used NO to abbreviate number here. I don't want to get confused. Zero racks. Um, when it's between 1 and 10, and 10, I'm going to call this, okay, something. I'm going to call this one rack needed. When it's in between 11 and 20, I'll call this two racks. And when it's between 21 and 30, I will call it three racks. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that each rack can hold 10. Uh, 10 parts. So we want to know, um, basically what we're doing is we're taking this a rework queue, which is in units of one, and then we're batching it into units of 10. And we want to see how, um, what percentage of time are we in this batch? What percent of time are we in this batch category? What percentage of time are we in this batch category? And what percentage of time we're in this batch category? So we can make a determination on whether or not we should purchase um, some racks for the rework uh, area. We want to know this. Uh, we also want to know the amount of time that the sealer spends in each of the three states. So we can create a second statistic, and we can call this um, sealer states. Again, this is a frequency statistic. Um, but now, instead of looking at a value, we're looking at the state of the sealer machine. Um, so anytime the sealer machine changes states from busy to idle or from busy to failed, um, then um, it will record uh, these different states into um, a, another statistic. So uh, we can go ahead and we can run this. Um, we're told We are told that um, we know that now it's a two shift operation. So we can say that there are 16 hours per day. We want to run this for 10 days. Um, so we can run 10 days, 16 hours per day. So that's gonna be a total of 20 shifts that we're going to be observing. And we're just gonna do this once. We can hit okay and we can hit play and we can sit through this slowly or we can speed it up. Fast forward.
And we can look at these results. So we have here the different um, reports. Um, and so if we look at this, uh, the things that will be um, affected are utilization. I can see now that um, scheduled utilization and instantaneous utilization are different. Um, and you can look in the textbook for the exact difference between the two. Um, and then we can look at those statistics that we defined. And those were frequency statistics. And we can see that most of the time, right, 60% of the time, we are only using one rack. So one rack would be maybe a good investment to make. And then we can see that um, most of the time our sealer was busy. Um, it was idle some amount of time and failed a lesser amount of time. And we can make some determinations on whether we need to uh, maybe buy a new machine or improve the way we, we fix our machine. But I think these are pretty good numbers. Again, though, this is only one replicate. So if we want to run this, let's close the report and stop this. If we want to run this um, multiple times, maybe we want to run uh, 50 replications. So this is now um, a trial n equals 50. Um, I'm just going to change the name of this so I don't override my old um, report. Um, so 50 replications, it will take a very long time if we just hit play and we watch it run. So what we can do is we can go to run control batch run and we're running multiple batches and we look down once I hit play at the status bar we're actually going through each of the um, simulation each of the replications quite quickly. So we can look at the results. And now that we have multiple replicates, we have something new. We have a half width, and this is for a 95% confidence interval. So on average, the total time in system was 56.6 minutes, plus or minus 3.27. And we have this for all of our metrics. We now have some half widths and again by default this half width is the 95% confidence level. We can always um, work backwards and then calculate a different confidence interval if we would like. So that's it for model 4-2. I will see you guys all later. Bye!